Welcome back aliens, my name is Davin Reddy and in this video we will talk about pure function. Now this concept is available in most of the languages, example JavaScript which is functional programming. Uh, so we have JavaScript, Python and in Java as well we can write pure functions. Now you will be saying hey in Java we don't do that right, we don't write functions, we write methods. So yes you can say pure methods but in Java 8 we got a concept of functional programming. If you have heard about lambdas or different stuff. So we can write functional programming in Java now as well and that's where we have this term which is pure functions in Java as well. So we can say pure functions now. But why do we need it? Now think about this, when you are working on a project, of course, right, you, you get requirements and then what you do, you convert those requirements into code. Initially when you write your code, you will simply create a class and then in that class you will add methods. Now as you look at the requirement, when you will break it down and based on that you will create a lot of classes, a lot of methods and that's where problem starts. Because when you are writing the project, you understand what you are doing. But then when you work in a team, of course, you want everyone to know what you are doing. And for that, your code has to be simple. So we have this concept in a software development, which is KISS, which is keep it simple, stupid. And that's important, right? You have to keep your code simple. But the problem is, so when you work on a project, you simply create more classes, more methods and variables, and then methods which work, which works on those variables. And that's where problem starts because you understand your code, but not your peers. Plus, even if you are, if you are looking at your code after one week, it is it will be difficult for you to understand and it will be difficult for you to debug it. And trust me, we spend less time in coding and more time in debugging. And to solve that, we have to keep your code simple. And one of the way to do that is write pure function. The second reason why you should be using pure function is to achieve multi-threading. Of course, right, we have so much of powerful CPUs nowadays. And if you want to make it effective, you have to write your functions where you can have multiple threads working on the same function. If you want to know more about threads, just go to the video in the description. Uh, we have two videos there. One, what is thread and second, what is thread safety? Uh, you will understand what thread safety is and then it makes much more sense to you why to use pure functions, right? So if you want to achieve that, if you want to achieve thread safety, write pure functions. But what are pure functions? So when you say pure function, yes, it's a function where you will have some statements, right? And this statement will work on the arguments which you pass. So basically a function which accepts an argument and it will work on those arguments to give you the output. So which means if you pass a specific input to a function, it will return a specific output. But you will say most of the function do that, right? But the important thing is if you pass same input, it should give you same output irrespective how many times you're calling it. So example, if you want to uh, find a square of a number, let's say if you say a uh, five square, doesn't matter how many times you call it, it will, you will get 25. That's a pure function. The second one is it does not have any side effect. Example, let's say if you have a variable, a class variable, let's say count, and then you are calling a method which will change the values of it. That's a side effect because every time you call the method, it will change the value or something like, let's say when you withdraw the money from the bank, every time you call withdraw function, it will detect the money from your bank account. That's a side effect I'm talking about. So pure function will not have any side effect. The third one is whenever you pass an argument, don't change the value of the argument, okay? So let's say if I pass a list of values to you, two, four, six, and eight, after the function calling, the value for the list should be same, okay? Don't change the existing values of the list. Maybe if you want to find square of each number, create a new list and perform the operation there. Don't change the values of the arguments. And if you can achieve that, that's a pure function. To understand that, let's do a small code here. So we already have a code here. You can see we have a sample class in which you have some methods. In fact, you have three methods, even or odd, increment, and total cost. Now, if you look at these three methods, uh, I have named them. So we have method one, method two, and method three. So we have talked about pure function, right? And some properties of it. So you have to find the answer for this. So I want you to answer which of these methods are pure and which are impure. So impure basically means which are not following the pure function uh, properties. Uh, so pause this video in the comment section, comment this answer. So I hope you have commented the answer there. Now let's understand which of them is pure and which of them are impure. Now if you look at the first method, it is simple. It's a simple method which is even or odd which takes a number. And based on the number, it will find if it is even or odd. You can see we have a very simple code here. If you run, if you pass six, it will give you even. If you pass five, it will give you odd. That's the method, right? 
Now this function or the method is not dependent on some external value like count plus it is not even changing the values of something. So this is a pure function. So irrespective of how many times you call this by passing 5 you will get odd every time. What about this method here which is increment. So this basically this increment will change the value for count. So this is not pure this is impure and that's why if you have multiple threads calling the same function which is increment you will get data inconsistency. But that's not the case with even odd. So even if you have 10 threads and calling the same function with different values, you will get the same value. And then what about the total cost? Now it looks like a pure function because we are not changing the value of count. But unfortunately here we are dependent on the count variable which is out, which is coming from outside. So even this is an impure function, right? So this is only pure, the other two are impure. So in fact, I have created the object for that and then I'm calling them. So if I run this code, let's see what happens. So if I say run as Java application, you can see we got the output. So that's basically your pure and impure function. In fact, in Java 8, uh, thanks to the stream API and functional programming, we can achieve this. Let's say, let me just remove all this thing. Let's make it clean. And what I will do now is let me create a list of values. So I will say list and then this will be list of integers and we'll say, say maybe nums equal to arrays dot as list. So basically I'm passing some values and then I want to do some operation on it. So we, let's say we got these four values. And first of all, we have to import the package. So the thing I want to do with this is I want to find the square of each number. And yeah, that's what I want to do. I want to find the square of each number here. So the way you can do that is by saying nums. In fact, uh, this is assignment for you. Before continuing the video, what you can do is uh, complete this. So we have a list for you. And then you have to find the square of each number. So maybe you will call some external methods pass the list there and then find the square of each number. There's one of the tendency you can do is, let's say we have a method here, which is public uh, static void. Maybe you will say uh, square. That's a method, method name you have in which you will accept the list of integers and we'll say nums again. And then this is where you will say, okay, we got nums and then I will take each value and I will find a square of it. So you will say for int i equal to zero and then you will go till what? So you have to go till the end of it. So you will say nums dot size and then I will say i plus plus. So basically you're iterating between the values and then every time you got the value, you will change the existing value. So you will say nums dot uh, set and you will set the integer value of i and every time you will find the element, you will you will find a square of it, right? You will say i into or not i into i, you will say nums dot get i and then you will multiply this with the same value. In fact, before this, let me just take the value somewhere. I will say uh, the current value will be in n and I will say nums dot get i. So what you're doing is you're, you're fetching each value. So you will fetch two, then four, then six, then seven. And then you are, you are putting that in n and here you will be saying n into n. This is how you can find a square, right? In fact, what we will do now is once you got the square, let me print the value for nums. I'm printing this nums before finding the square. And now I will call the square function by passing nums. And then, so you have to answer this again, come, pause the video and let me know if this is a pure function or impure function, this, this one I'm talking about square. The moment you run this code, you can see we got the values, right? We got nums, but don't you think it is changing the existing value of nums? We don't want that. We don't want to change the existing values of num. We have, we want to create a new one. And so this is not a good way. So one way you could have done it, uh, you could have created a new list. And then when you find a square, just add the value in the new list. Okay, not in the existing list. That's one thing you can do. This was the earlier way, but in Java 8, what we can do is if you want to do the same thing, you can say nums dot. We, we have a method which is map. Or oh, first of all, you have to say stream. And with this stream, you can say call map. And in this map, you can take a value. So let's say if I take n, now this is a lambda expression thing which I'm which I'm doing here. Now if you don't know what lambda expression is, you can just find a video in the in description. So that's what I have explained about lambda and stuff. So what I'm doing is I'm saying n into n. Now I'm doing the same thing here. You can see I'm doing a map, but this map will return what? So map returns a string. So to print that, I will say for each i, I will print the value which is i. Maybe I, I can take the same variable name. That's fine. But even this works. Extra semicolon there. Let's let's run this code, and you can see we got the same values. So yes, I got 4, 16, 36 and 49 uh, because I'm doing it on the new line. That's why we got a new line. But let's say if I want to uh, give a space, even that works. You can see we got all the values. So even this is how you can change the value. But is it pure function? Let's let's understand that. What I will do now is I will print the original values for nums. What do you think? Will it be the new values or the old values? And if you run this code, you can see the old values are still 2, 4, 6, 7. And that's the advantage of using pure function because you're not updating the existing value which you're passing. 
and you can have multiple threads working on the same nums and nothing will happen because you're fetch simply fetching the values from num performing the operation and giving the output it is not updating nums so yeah that's the benefit of using pure function and this is available in most of the languages now the concept remains same yes syntax will change in javascript we have a different syntax when in, in python we have a different syntax but concept is same. So I hope you got the idea between pure and impure functions. So try to write more pure functions if you want to reduce the complexity and reduce the bugs. So that's it from this video. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know in the comment section. And this is for the video. Bye.